Good evening, everyone. And you are very welcome to our candlelit carol service. It's nice to see most of you. Some of you are well in the dark. Maybe that's where you want to be. Um, but it's lovely to come together on this evening to remind ourselves of the birth of our dear Saviour, Jesus Christ. Just a few announcements. Um, as you will have heard um, last Sunday, um, at our carol service, our offering goes to the World Development Appeal. Uh, and as we saw the little video clip last week, uh, we are reminded that it is to help those in, in Africa, uh, in Ethiopia in particular, who are experiencing severe drought at the moment, and then also supporting those in Haiti um, still recovering from the earthquakes. So if you haven't remembered to bring your envelope tonight, you can bring it with you on Christmas morning, um, and that will be our service on Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then next Sunday, um, Kirk Session and I decided that probably it would be better if we had an online service. Um, so that will be a recorded service that will go out um, next Sunday at half 11 at our usual time. Uh, and you can watch it at your leisure. Um, will be our Boxing Day service. And then, obviously, and hopefully all being well, the following Sunday we will be back in person at 11.30 on the 2nd of January. We come this evening to remind ourselves of the birth of Jesus Christ. It's something that we do every year. It is a service at which we hear familiar scripture passages and we sing familiar carols. Let's make this service as if it's the first time we've heard it. Drink it in and worship together as we sing and we hear of the birth of Jesus Christ. And our first carol encourages us to come and worship Christ the Lord. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. We stand to sing.
in the beginning, creator and created had perfect fellowship. That is, until Adam and Eve rebelled against God, prompted by the great deceiver Satan. The couple disobeyed God by eating the forbidden fruit. The moment they did, they knew that a significant line had been crossed. Our first reading tells us of the consequences and a paradise lost. Genesis 3, verses 8 to 24. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go. And you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Let's come to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, we have just been hearing about how you made the world beautiful. You made us in your own image, and yet we decided to rebel against you. But we thank you, Lord God, that you still loved us. And even though Adam and Eve disobeyed, and they had to be put out of the Garden of Eden, that paradise that they lost. We thank you that you promised to them that salvation would come. And so this evening as we gather here for worship, may we refresh our minds of your great love and your grace. May we refresh our minds of how you plan salvation from all eternity and that you were going to send Send one who was born of a woman to bring us back to you. Lord, we recognize that we need you. We need your love. We need your forgiveness. We need to see you afresh day by day because it's so easy for us to forget about you in the midst of all that goes on. So for this time this evening, O God, may we focus our eyes totally on you. 
and help us to see you in all your glory. To experience your presence and know your love. And recognize your wonderful grace in Jesus Christ. In whose name we pray. Amen. As we heard in our first reading, despite Adam and Eve's disobedience and the entry of sin into the world, God promised to send one who would deal Satan a lethal blow. The covenant of salvation is heralded and illustrated through God's dealing with Abraham. A son of promise was given to Abraham, and in a test of faith, he was willing to sacrifice his son. In this, we are given a glimpse into what God himself would do in the future. Let's listen to what God had to say to Abraham in Genesis chapter 22, verses 12 to 18. And he, the angel, said, Do not lay your hand on the lad, or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram, caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram, and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, The Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven, and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. That last verse holds great promise. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Centuries would pass before we get a hint of who this person will be, and even then it is rather cryptic, written in a few verses in the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. We sing a carol that talks about the promise coming of the Messiah. Come. O long expected Jesus.
To whom would this child be born? Isaiah had also given a prophecy, declaring in chapter 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. But who would this virgin be? Luke chapter 1 gives us the answer. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favoured one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting was this. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Joseph was let in on the plan, as we discover in Matthew chapter 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take your Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Upon accepting God's will for her life, Mary burst into song. It is known as the Magnificat, and we sing a hymn based on Luke chapter 1, 46 to 56, Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord.
we have two indications of where this child would be born. First of all, there is the prophecy tucked away in the book of Micah, which mentions Bethlehem. Given that Mary and Joseph lived in Nazareth, Nazareth, quite a distance away, how come they are in Bethlehem for the baby to be born? We heard in the previous reading, Joseph was a son of David, or in our terms, a descendant of King David. A reading from Luke chapter 2 gives us the answer. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, every one to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Our next carol continues the story as it is based on Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 14 which tells us of the first people to be told the news of the birth of Jesus. While shepherds watched their flocks by night. part of the story may have taken place quite some time later. We include it in our Christmas, our Christmas narrative. It is the visit of the Magi or wise men. Tradition says there were three of them. The text actually doesn't tell us, but we definitely have three distinctive and significant gifts. We read about the visit in Matthew chapter 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. 
When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, having been divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, They departed for their own country another way. Let us ponder on this as we sing the first Noel. Our last reading clarifies the identity of this child. John 1, 
1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into this world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, and who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Charles Wesley has captured the truth of this in the well-known and popular carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Let us encourage one another as we sing it together. This evening we have been reminding ourselves through scripture and also through the songs, our carols that we are so familiar with. But I wonder do we often, or do we at all, think of some of the songs that we hear played over the radio and maybe in a shopping center until you're nearly sick listening to them. 
But I want you to just look for a moment if this clicker is going to work for me. Okay, you've got Wham. You've got Bob Geldof, Mariah Carey, Boney M, Slade, and Bing Crosby. And if I was to ask you what is the connection, you would automatically say Christmas songs. And those Christmas songs, we have, some of us have grown up with them. And even if you're not old enough or my age, you will still have heard them. I want to actually think of some of the lyrics in those songs that they have been singing. Of course, we could um, think of Old Blue Eyes himself and think of a film, Holiday Inn. 1940, before your time, yes, <clears throat> 1942 was the film. And of course, we're all familiar with the song, even if we don't even know what the film's about. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas, just like the ones I used to know. I'm not breaking the song, you're okay. Where the treetops glisten and the children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. With every Christmas card I write, may your days be merry and bright and may all your Christmases be white. Now, that is a very sentimental view of Christmas, isn't it? It's the things that you see on a Christmas card. The deep snow, sleighs, maybe even reindeer and sleigh. But that is how the world sometimes thinks of Christmas. That's what it's all about. Now, dear help you if you live in in Australia, because Christmas is in the middle of the summer. In fact, a few days after Midsummer's Day. And so you'll not see any snow. But for us in this part of the world, that's what we think of. And that's what people associate with Christmas. But surely it needs to be more than sentimental attitudes and phrases and pictures. Well, obviously what was going on in Africa in 1984 affected Bob Bob Geldof and he formed Band-Aid. And he was thinking of what was going on there. And so... In their song, it says, do they know it's Christmas time at all because of what was going on in their lives at that particular time? There was drought. There was little food. They were suffering a lot. And if you think that today we are giving to World Development Appeal and beneficiaries are going to be those in Africa, in Ethiopia, Things have changed so little in those decades. We are also thinking of those in Haiti. The the whole situation there is quite dire. And it caught me, it caught my eye whenever I was reading through the, the lyrics. But say a prayer, a prayer for the other ones. Don't they know it's Christmas time at all? In the midst of all that's happening in their lives, do they even know that it is Christmas? And so, as we have been encouraging you to give, we ask you too to pray for those who need help at this time of year. That is band-aid. But here is another song. by Mariah Carey. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There's just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want you for my own more than you could ever know. Make my wish come true. All I want for Christmas is you. Now, obviously, that is a love song. But as I was thinking of those words, all I want for Christmas is you, because I don't care about the presence underneath the tree. 
But I wonder how many of us think in those terms when it comes to the Lord Jesus. Because at this time of year, we are all concerned about buying the presents and getting things ready for the big day. But really, isn't Christmas all about Jesus? And I wonder, can we say, all I want for Christmas is you? Saying that to the Lord Jesus. Yes, the presents are lovely. The presents are lovely to have. But Christmas is about Jesus. And we could turn that around and Jesus could be saying, all I want for Christmas is for you to recognize who I am and what I came to do as I came as a baby. All I want for Christmas is you. Let's think of another song. That song, by the way, was recorded in 1994. Here's another one by Wham. Last Christmas I gave you my heart, but the very next day you gave it away. This year, to save me from tears, I'll give it to someone special. Again, as I read those words, I wasn't thinking so much of a love-struck person. Someone who had fallen in love, but they had fallen out of love. I gave you my heart. The very next day, you gave it away. But it was the next two lines that caught my eye. This year, to save me from tears, I'll give it to someone special. We only give our hearts to someone whom we trust. We only give our hearts to someone in whom we can have full confidence and we actually fall in love with. Jesus loves us and he gave his all for us. And if you take it this year to save me from tears, I'll give it to someone special. If we want to save ourselves from tears, and I mean the tears of disappointment, the tears of regret, the tears of fear, then the only one who can actually save us from that is the Lord Jesus Christ. But I wonder, have we given our heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? Wham recorded that in 1984. I wonder, could this be a special year for you when you recognize that you actually do need the Lord Jesus? Because in 1978, Boney M, whenever I was young, they could have called me Boney M, but not because of singing, but they sang that song, Mary's Boy Child, but then they added a bit to it. And I think this bit is so important. Let everyone know there is hope for all to find peace. Oh, my Lord, you sent your son to save us. Oh, my Lord, your very self you gave us. Oh, my Lord, that sin may not enslave us and love may reign once more. That is basically the crux of the matter for Christmas. There is hope for all to find peace. Now that peace is peace with God. That peace is the peace that the world cannot give and it can't take it away whenever we receive it. And God sent his son so that we could have peace with God. You gave your very self to us. So that we were no longer enslaved by sin. But we would be free. We would be liberated in Jesus Christ. And love may reign once more. The love of God that sent Jesus. The love of God that will surround us, support us. And indeed will save us. And we are told in it to let everybody know. So tonight, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, then you go and you share that because there is hope in no one else but Jesus. 
let everyone know there's hope for all to find peace because God sent his son. There's one final song which you may think is a bit odd to finish with this. But it's slain. And I know every shopping center you go into, it'll be blasting out. And so here it is. Merry Christmas. Everybody's having fun. It's not that bit. Although I hope you do have fun this Christmas. But it says, look to the future now. It's only just begun. And that is what happens whenever we give our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Our future is secure in him. And eternity with God begins the very moment you give your life to the Lord Jesus. So we can look forward to the future with confidence. We can look forward no matter what happens in 2022. And at the moment, things are not looking great, are they? It's so uncertain. But whenever we have our hand in the hand of the one who made the world, put our hands in the hand of the one who loves us and came for us, then our future is secure. Look to the future now. It's only just begun from the moment you give your life to Jesus. So, although these songs may be secular, and lots of the lyrics will talk about having fun and presence and love and all the rest of it, in the midst of it all, there are those words, those phrases, that if we take them the right way, will point us to the Lord Jesus who came as a tiny baby, yes, but he came to make us his own children of God. Not in our own way, our own ways or our own works, but through trusting in Jesus. Our final carol is actually talking about that silent night, but it talks about the dawn of redeeming grace. It talks about Christ coming to be our saviour. So I leave you with the question, is he yours? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for all that he came to do. We thank you for his humility and his birth. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for how they were all fulfilled. And we thank you, Lord God, that we meet here this evening as a result of what Christ has done. For we have something to celebrate, something to share, that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is available to us. And through that grace, we become children of God through faith. So may we continue to ponder on these things. For we ask through him who loves us. And we ask through him who cares for this world. And so we pray this evening for those in other lands who need that touch of God. They need that support. They need that generosity of those who have been blessed abundantly by God. And so, Lord, we pray that you will take the gifts that we bring to bring relief to those in Ethiopia, to bring hope to those in Haiti. And, oh God, we know that there's there's so much in this world that needs your gracious touch. As we continue to pray for our own land, that you will bring guidance to those who rule over us. You will give strength to those who are trying to help us. And that we will see a way forward in your will. And so, Lord, hear us as we.
pray in Jesus' name and we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May we go from this place knowing the Lord Jesus to be our friend, our Savior, and our Lord. As we work our way towards Saturday, may we constantly think of the gift that God has given us in Christ. And like all gifts, they are best if they are shared. So share that message with those you meet. So let's bless one another now with the words of the grace. As we say, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.